Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Healing Art After Hours. I'm Shauna Robeson, Creating Space Coastal. And in this video, we're continuing our inky journey by looking at some specialty items, fun with re-inkers, what you can do playing around with them, and also using shaving cream with them to get some fun techniques. We're also going to be looking at alcohol inks and playing around with some different techniques with those as well. So these are just more specialty techniques and inks and items. And so I thought it'd be fun to just uh, play around with them. So if you're interested in finding out what we do, stay tuned. Let's get started. Welcome to more inky adventures. We're going to be doing some specialty inks and techniques tonight. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about chemistry. So if that freaks you out, you can mute me for a little bit. But um, but I think it's helpful to understand this when we're, you're dealing with whatever medium that you're working with. And I have talked about before uh, that that working with inks is very similar to working with watercolors. And while that is true, inks are not watercolors and vice versa. They do behave differently because they are different. A watercolor is a suspension. It's ground pigment that's put into a gum arabic binder and then when you wet it the gum binder is water soluble. The particles themselves are not. Now there is it is possible that some of the staining ones uh, do actually dissolve. So when we talk about solution if you think about sugar in water how those little granules dissolve well that's what a solution is. Um, it's when it actually dissolves, basically all of the molecules break up and connect and come back together. So it stays in solution. It's not going to settle. If you set, if you let it sit there, the salt, the um, sugar is not going to drop to the bottom and then the water is going to be on the top. It's just going to stay in a solution. And that's what inks are. Inks are, uh, I'm sorry, I will specifically say water-based dye inks. So those are a solution of the dye, it's not particles. So the pigment ink is particles that suspended, meaning that the particles are of their bigger molecules and they're suspended through chemistry in that solution. And if they're not, um, if it's they're not chemically bound with the binder, they could separate. Uh, same with if you're talking about like um, shimmer sprays and things like that, any of those mica things that have mica powder in them, unless there's some chemistry there that's keeping it suspended, there's still suspended particles, but sometimes whatever it's in may separate out depending on what, what it is and, and what it's mixed with. Watercolor is suspended particles in a gum arabic, which is water soluble. So that breaks apart the binder so that it can move and it moves differently on paper than ink will. Water-based dye ink is going to absorb, it's basically liquid that's going into those small um, porous surface. So it goes in quickly, it doesn't move as readily. Now they do add binders to make it move a little bit better. So there's sometimes there's the gum arabic as a binder in an ink to allow it to be more uh, water reactive and lift. Whereas some inks don't have that, and, and it, once it's on there, it's going to be, it's going to stay. It's not going to, it's not going to lift as easily because it's just absorbing right into those fibers. And acrylic paint is also suspended particles. So watercolor and acrylic ink, those, I mean acrylic paint are suspended particles, as are, is pigment ink. So just be aware of that and because how they behave is different. Now, you see this solvent-based ink, and I'm just going to tell you now that water is a solvent. Anything that dissolves something is a solvent, so it's a little confusing. So for water-based, our water-activatable inks, water is the solvent. So water is the what will release it, um, release the molecules and allow that pigment to be released. And in the case of alcohol inks, alcohol is the solvent. Now alcohol also has a binder. The solvent is the vehicle or the, the liquid part of the that dissolves the particles, but it also needs a little bit of a binder so it sticks to those non-porous surfaces or, you know, well, in porous surfaces it's going to just absorb right in and stain it. But on non-porous surfaces, 
it's not necessarily going to be sticky because alcohol is not sticky. So there's a resin that is put in as a binder in alcohol ink based ink. <laughs> there's different delivery systems. So it could be markers. It could be ink pads. Solvent based ink pads are alcohol based. They don't call them alcohol based, but they are. That's the solvent. And then um, there are even oil based. Now, in that case, oil would be the solvent because oil can break up those sim similar molecules. OK, enough about chemistry, but I wanted you to understand that because a lot of times I see people trying out different things or like, oh, how does this ink work with this and work with this? Like if I want to use alcohol markers and if you understand the chemistry, you'll know, oh, if it's an alcohol based solvent, so an alcohol based ink even though it's permanent, isn't going to hold up with alcohol-based markers because the markers will dissolve that um, will dissolve it and move that pigment around. So, so understanding that will help you not have to do trial and error with everything. Um, and of course, acrylic paints, which is is water. Um, mixable, it is not water activatable, meaning once it's dry, it's actually like a solid thing that doesn't release, but that's a whole different animal. Okay, so on to the program. What you see on the screen is this is a dye based ink, and these are the re inkers. And the reason I am showing you that is that the reason they're called re inkers is because this basically is how I would reload this ink pad. Now, a lot of the higher end inks have that option. And basically, you just take the reinker and you squish and run it on, on the top of the pad. And if it sucks right in, it's thirsty. And as it starts to slow down in how much it's taking it in, you go, oh, okay, now I know it's juicy and full. Now, I know that this is pretty juicy, so I'm not going to re redo it. But you just go one direction and then the other direction, and you see how much sucks in there. So that's what these are for. However, there are lots of other things you can do with this. You know, this is limited. I can put it on a surface and use it from it, but it's not as concentrated. I mean, it's the same formula. It's just a different delivery system. And this, you can get a lot, a lot more juice, right? So it's just a different way of getting the same product. So how can you use these besides just re-inking your ink pads? Well, there are many different ways. They actually sell, you've probably seen those water pens that are filled with color. And so if you are interested in having a water brush, an ink, you know, inky water brush, you can actually mix some of this with water. You can water it down to whatever value you want. I would use a like a distilled water or something that, you know, you don't probably not tap water because it's got a lot of contaminants in it, um, but at least a filtered water. And then you can have your own inky brush pens. And you, if you already got this, you know, you can save money, just buy the, buy the blank ones and fill them. Okay. Another thing you can do is make your own spray inks. So again, you can just add this to some water to get it to the consistency you like, because these are pretty concentrated. These are very concentrated. And so just out of the bottle, it's going to probably be maybe darker than you would want for, for spray inks. Um, but you can decide, you can decide how, and you can even make several of them a light, medium, and darker value. So that's how you can use these as well. And there's other techniques. A lot of them, we can do a modification of what we did with the, the ink pads where you just put it directly on your work surface and use it with the watercolor techniques and things like that. Um, or water brush, you know, you can do watercoloring and, and whatnot with those. Now, another thing that you can do with these that, that you can't really do with the ink pad at all is this funky technique that I'm going to show. <laughs> and this is messy. It, it does use a lot of ink and, and um, it's, it's, it's kind of messy, but it does give a unique, a, a unique look that there really there aren't other ways that come to mind to get this look. So. I'm like, okay, I was trying to think of other ways to get it without this, <laughs> but fortunately I didn't think of any. So if you guys have them, let me know. Um, so basically it's the shave cream technique and you want to use the foam, not the gel. So even though the gel turns creamy, don't use that. 
and you want to just put some on a surface you don't need a ton you don't have to fill you can use it on a paper plate or whatever you don't need to fill up like the whole world with it so use as little as you can and then you just want to have a nice uh foamy you know layer kind of a flat layer then i can take these uh these little inkers and i can drip some in just like a few drops will do like one two three because like i said they're really concentrated and i can't say that this is at all archival safe and that's another thing it's like well you know if you're making cards it doesn't really matter too much but uh, if you're doing something art wise i probably would be cautious about doing something like this so i've got my colors in there now i can take remember these stylus tools from our dot dot making so you can just take this or, or a little you know plastic knife or whatever and you can just create a pattern basically this just becomes almost like a stamp it's it's the delivery system for your ink so now you can just take whatever paper i'm going to do it on my you know classic press 80 pounds and i'm just going to set this right on top it's going to put that ink on the surface of the paper so when i lift it up i'm going to have that ink on there now i can reset it down it doesn't matter if i pick up some of the foam you're going to <laughs> but maybe there are areas that didn't get enough and i just want to add so i'm just gonna kind of add and then i can just wipe it off and i'm left with a really funky psychedelic groovy whatever you want to call it <laughs> design on my paper so it's basically like the foam is a stamp for marble look and you can keep using it you can keep stamping it's gonna change i can even go in and if i if i think that the design has changed and i don't like it i can kind of move it around a little bit now i have that look Let's see what that ends up and you don't really know what you got until you take the foam off and you see what actually landed on the paper do you use watercolor paper for this this is this one's watercolor paper but the other one wasn't cool so you could use either uh you probably want to you want to use at least a cardstock you don't you probably you know just because it's it's kind of wet but um but yeah this one's a watercolor and this one's not and i could even try spritzing that and seeing what the inks do after if i want um you know if i if i think okay um i've never tried that but let's just it's on watercolor paper so if i spritz it i might get some movement yeah i'm getting a little bit of movement but um but then i lose my marble i think i'm gonna lose some of my marbling if i do that so i, I want to be I think just leaving it that way the other thing you can do is you can use a stencil so this is a, i'm just laying the stencil on top and then i'm going to scoop up some of this pattern that's on there kind of like icing and then i'm just gonna run that through the stencil see what i get now you're never going to get the same thing twice as you can see so it's all about just letting the letting it go and see what happens. So that's kind of a fun little rainbow effect. Now for this technique, if I if I wipe this off now, I have found, and maybe it's different depending on the, the on the paper, but I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that. Oh, that didn't do too bad. Uh, one time I wiped it and the color, I don't know if the color was just so saturated, but it kind of smeared on to the page that one left it up so you can either let it dry all the way or you can go ahead and scrape it off 
And I can make several of these, you know, until I run out of foam or, you know, design. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's still showing, it's still showing up. I mean, it's definitely, you know, the pigment is getting softer. When I, the first time I saw this, I thought, well, that wastes a lot of stuff, but really you can make, if you have several things ready to go, you can make a lot of things at one time and then it doesn't feel quite as, you know, wasteful if you're, if you're using it all up. If you're just doing one stamp, like a monoprint, then I would say that's, that's a lot of materials to throw away. <laughs> but, but I'm making, you know, I've made quite a few things here so far and I can keep scooping up this foam. Now the foam is all, you know, mostly along the edge. And if I move it in, you know, it's a lot of it's mixing together. So it's going to look very different than how it looked before. I could add more of the ink if I wanted. Just, you know me, I like to get the most out of things. <laughs> I am frugal. I admit it. I could spend all night having fun with those, but as you can see, there's a lot of different things you can get. Let me just show you. So this is the, the two micas uh, I did through stencil. This was just using one color, but I still got some fun marbling. I really liked that. And then some other multicolored ones. And then when it starts to mix together. So you can really have some fun with that. I also tried it. Uh, I think this one I let dry. This was one that I wiped and I don't know if there was just so much pigment there, but it kind of moved the pigment on to the page too, which isn't a bad look. It's just not quite as white in between as this other one that I let dry. Now this one I used and I had stamped it previously and I tried just, you know, kind of wiping that off and it stayed pretty good. And this is actually on photo paper. So I was just curious to see how it would work on photo paper. Now I tried this technique with a different foam. I was thinking, okay, foams, foam is foam maybe, right? And I like to experiment because, you know, I'm a chemist in one of my former lives. And so I tried it with this because I don't know about you, but I have a lot of hand sanitizer <laughs> that's left over um, that I don't use every day. And this is one of them and it was a mousse. So I thought, okay, that could work. Cause it, you know, it kind of comes out like, you know, similar, but it's not as, it's not as um, thick, like it's a really light. And so the ink does not sit on top of it. Like it does the other one. It's just not as thick of a density and I was able to get a couple it does work but it you know it bleeds through so that's the back which looks not bad that's the front now this is just a cardstock it's not watercolor this is um this is also a cardstock so I was able to get some interesting techniques now this was on the, the glossy photo paper and I let it dry and it just comes right off. So that was a bust. I wouldn't do that, but you could certainly try that too. If that's all you have around the house, if you don't have shave cream, you can certainly try that. The other thing with reinkers, and I've, I've showed you this with the watercolor techniques, but I just wanted to show you with the reinkers how, how much fun you can have. And I, I really did it a little different when I did the watercolor techniques. So I want to show you a little more in depth what you can do with these guys. Now this is a glass mat. Actually, it's a, an old picture frame and I painted the bottom with primer <laughs> to make my own working mat. But I can just put it right on there, right on the, the glass, and I could move it around. I could use my fingers if I didn't, if I wanted, if I had gloves on. I also am going to add a little bit of water to get it moving. And then I'm also going to use watercolor paper 
and I'm going to wet that. Now I'm going to put in there and I can get it a whole different look. And if there's a corner that didn't get enough, I can dip in a little bit more. Now, what I want to show you with this is some of the layering you can get with a water-based ink, uh, because I'm going to show you some techniques with the alcohol as well, but you can get some similar effects with the watercolor. But what you want to do is you want to dry between each layer. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be, I'm going to draw, I'm going to dip and then I'm going to dry and then I'm going to dip and dry. And I just want to show you what kind of looks we can get. Okay, so now it's mostly dry. There's a little patch right there, but that's fine. And then I'm going to just put it back in. I kind of want to stamp it in a little bit so I can get some texture. Now you can do the same technique with ink pads. You just you just stick the pad directly on there. It's just that the reinkers are a little bit more concentrated. So you're just gonna get, you know, a little bit more concentration of color if you do it with three or so. Now I could I could add more ink down if there's a certain color that I want or whatever. I could add a little bit more water if I wanted to reactivate some of it. Maybe that I want that color, more of that color. Um, but see the depth that you can get just by layering. You just you just dip it in, dry, dip it in, dry, dip it in, dry, and then you get these really cool layering effects. Now I could also and because it is pigment it's going to be a little bit more opaque so that's going to it's going to sit on top of those other colors rather than just lay, um, you know changing colors with them it's going to be a little bit more pink than the others the other ones if there's a color underneath it's going to change right because you're going to see you're going to see the layers that are underneath too okay Ooh, i am loving that that is a lot of fun look at all of that fun those fun textures just with using the reinkers and then a little bit of pigment reinkers. Lots of fun, and especially because it has a little bit of that mic in, so it's got some shimmer and it's not even, you're not even seeing probably it as, as good as it looks in person. Anyway, so you can have a lot of fun with these water-based inks. One way to clean this glass mat uh, with all those extra supplies we have for you know, cleaning our hands. Uh, if you have some hand sanitizer gel, and this will be really important when you're using the alcohols, but it's a, it cleans the mat really nice. So those are some ways that you can use the re-inkers for other than what they you would imagine. There are some things that have been out there on the market that have disappeared. And one of those I did want to show you just in case you're like me, you've purchased things hundred years ago, maybe never used them. I know I look good for that my age, right? <laughs> and so they're still in your art toolbox, but you don't know what to do with them. And part of the reason that these disappeared, I think, is because there wasn't a lot you could do with them, honestly. Um, I mean, there was some stuff you could do that was different than other things, but I think a lot of them you could do with other things. But the one thing that you can't, couldn't really do with another, another thing that I thought was really fun is creating these little splats. This is basically a dauber. It's got a dauber top and then it's ink. And I think it's, it's more fluid than what you would probably find. It's probably similar to what the ink consistency would be for the distress inks, because I think that is, is a little bit of a thinner formula than, than like the Stampin' Up! inks do. But, um, so it's really, it's, it's kind of thin, so it moves very readily. But one really cool thing you can do with these is if you just splat it down, 
it makes us flat. And I love them. You can also, you know, you can kind of draw with them and you can do just regular dots too. But I really love the splats. I think the splats are something that are fun to have, especially with any kind of grunge look that you just can't do. I mean, you can use them with stencils, you can go over stencils, things like that. But um, as far as using them with stamps, I think you can, but um, I tried them with word stamps and I found them too juicy. Maybe if I just am a little more careful, maybe I push too hard, you can do that. Uh, I just found that they it ended up making it kind of mess, but maybe if I'm just really delicate and don't push down too hard, I can stamp with it. So yeah, that works. Um, as long as I don't press too hard and splatter too much, I think that works just fine. Yeah, so if you do happen to have some of the dauber inks in your, you know, in your repertoire, this is what you, some of the things that you can do. Uh, if you have different colors, I don't have a lot of colors in this, so I pretty much have Cup of Joe, which is brown, I have a lot of those, and then I have green, so I could make, I could, you know, try doing like a rainbow kind of thing. Uh, they just, I mean, they just fill in nice and solid. So if you just want to make like a little scribble, they're great for that. Now, you can also probably get the dauber out and just use them like a reinker if you don't want, if you don't like the daubing idea, you could use them that way, so. Oh, but let me just show you this splat because this one's a cup of joe and that's like a great splat. Look at that. Isn't that fun for like a coffee, looking like a coffee stain? Like, like coffee strips. I love that one. <laughs> okay. So like I said, I don't think that these are on the market anymore just because I think there's just not enough unique things that people could do and maybe they just didn't sell. Now, Distress Inks also have re-inkers. Now, Distress Inks have them in a variety of delivery systems between Distress Pencils, Markers, uh, droppers and sprays. So you, so the higher end uh, companies do have a lot of variations. So if you want these different delivery systems, you'll be able to find whatever it is that works for what techniques you want to do. And this again can be a re-inker or you can drip it on to get like actual drips. Now, maybe that's what, again, why the dauber wasn't the best choice because you could just simply make a drop. See, but that didn't splatter. It didn't really splatter. Let me see. Do I have to go far away? No, it doesn't splatter. Do I have to like pounce on it? I don't know. I don't know how to get that. But that's kind of cool. I can stamp the bottom of the bottle. <laughs> so but look at how dark that is. I mean, that's just a really rich color. And you could use that, you could dilute it, just like with the other reinkers, you could dilute it and put it in the bottle if you wanted just to have it spray. Or once you spray, put it on, you can just activate it and get some cool effects. This is watercolor paper, so it's gonna move it around so you can get some really fun effects that way. At that and distress ink is very reactive so it's going to move quite easily when you do wet it you can do the same thing with those you can dry if you know even with one color if you dry between layers you can get a really cool effect that way too and, uh so try so try that as well now there's sprays and these are messy as well there are spray stains and there are shimmer sprays or glimmer sprays or however they're called but they're basically sprays with color so they're a they're a dye liquid with a color a pigment 
and then they have mica in them. So when you look at them without shaking them, you'll see a layer of colored liquid. That's the, that's the solution, that's the dye. And then you'll see a layer of that mica that's settled out and that's sus suspended, but only when you shake it. So if you're using these, just know that they settle. Don't, don't spray it without getting it mixed up. Sometimes uh, things that have that where you have to mix them will have a ball in there. And I'll show you something like that later. But um, so these are my favorites, I think, of the ones that I've used. And they are still around. And that's why I like to show them. But it's uh, Lindy's Stamp Gang. And they're, they're very vibrant. So I'm going to show you these compared to some other ones. Now, as far as spraying goes, it's an empty, guys. So what I do, I do a couple things. One of the things that I do is I have a journal that's just a kind of a mixed media journal that's just for my back catching my sprays. And that way I can cut up this paper later and use it in projects because it makes some cool backgrounds. So I'll show you a few different ones that I've made. They're still in here. And I've, I've used it to do my stencil embossing um, media with stencils and things like that too. So anything where I'm going to leave some on a page, I can use this to not only protect the surface, but also to catch it so I can repurpose it with other projects. Some, you know, turn out better than others as far as using. Now, what I can do is I can set this, prop this up against my monitor in this case or whatever, and then I can spray here and it's kind of blocking this. Now, I don't, it's not blocking my sides, so it can still get really messy. You'll see some of these splatters are off the edge. So you really do want to have a nice space to work with when you're doing any kind of the sprays. And that's one of the downsides of sprays is so much of it's wasted. So, you know, only so much is ending up on your project and there's a lot that goes elsewhere. So this makes me feel a little better about using them because I feel like I'm using every, you know, every last bit of it as much as possible. Um, so this is one way to do it, but it's not protecting the whole thing. So if you if you really want to protect the area that you're working on, I use this with aerosols as well, aerosol um, varnish and things like that. And you can get a, just a cardboard box. These are one of those cubes you'd get like at the dollar store or whatever. Okay, and they're 12 by 12 and they fold up. So I can reuse this and sometimes I'll lay something in, I'll lay, you know, whatever the, the journal inside. I don't know if this journal fits in here. Yeah, I think I just put some other paper, but um, so I might lay some paper inside or whatever, but then I can spray it within this box and it's not gonna get on anything else that I'm, you know, around. It's gonna basically stay, it's gonna stay right inside this cube. So this is, this is a fabric and you could line it with other protector things, but I don't mind if stuff gets on it, as long as it's not stuff that's gonna stay and it's going to get on other stuff, right? So if, if it's going to be water soluble and it might lift and get on something else, I might put a protective, you know, something protective in there. And then I, I use these to maybe secure a project that I, or, you know, something like that. And I just stick these right on here and then I can store it right on my shelf because it's it folds to just really thin. So that's one way you can have a regular spray and it's small enough. I don't need it for bigger, I, you know, I obviously it wouldn't work for bigger projects, but you can use, like I said, cardboard boxes or things like that if you have a bigger project. All right, so let me just demonstrate the sprays. Now, what you can do with sprays, there's a lot of different things you can do. The, the first thing that probably comes to mind when working with sprays is doing stencils. And, and sprays are great for stencils. Now this one worked right away. This is a candy corn orange. And I, um, I guess I should bring that up now. So the problem with these sprays is that with the mica, it does clog the nozzles. Now this one, I, I put some stamp cleaner 
in the, this little cap and I put the nozzle in there and I'm hoping that now this one that I used it with will spray. I'm going to try it in the trash. And it, when, it's, when you're trying to get it going, sometimes it'll just drip out and make a nice note. It's still not working. So then what I do, my backup is, remember I showed you that little glass bottle? I bought a bunch of these little glass, little glass bottles. And so whenever I have a problem with my spray, although I do also save everything that comes in a spray after I use it, this is not lens cleaner, this is just water, but I save all the spray bottles whenever I've used up anything and I keep them and then I use them for things like this. So what I would do is then pour this into this little vial and use it from there. And if I think about it, I'll try to clean that nozzle right away so that I don't. So I just pour it. Now it's nice if you have a little funnel, like a little mini funnel for perfume. But I will probably put this in some hot water later and work on getting that nozzle open. But in the meantime, I wanted to use this color and I just thought, well, it's a good opportunity to show you guys what happens because it happens a lot. And sometimes what I'll do is I just rubber band this with the original bottle and so I can refill it whenever this empties because it's small. Okay, so I'm going to use this. And you see, I don't have a lot of control of where that's spraying. It's got, this has got like a wide, wide spray. <laughs> so it's, this is a little bit more controlled. So I kind of like these little, these little bottles better anyway, because I feel like I have more control. Sometimes the bottles, you know, if you press it a little bit, it'll just do drops and you know, you can change it up by how you spray, but. But there you go. So now I can create some fun stencil effects. Now it's not, the fun isn't over because I can also use the reverse stencil. And I'm gonna do that on the other side so it's more obvious. And you could start this way too, but this is like a, like a double duty. So now I've got all of this juicy ink on here. I just flip it around and I press. And all of that ink is gonna to my project and create another really cool effect and it's quite different and you know, a lot of times you have these little water spots that are fun that just add to the texture if you don't like those you could you know you could dab them up like if you didn't want it to dry with those little concentrated areas you could just dab those off but I actually like the look of those so that's how you can use the spray inks with with stencils and that's one of the funnest ways you can just spray directly on a project and get the random sprays or maybe you want it to be splattery if you want to just have some drips on there and you want to control that you can use a brush like you do with watercolor too you could just take a brush and dip into it what I do though is I just I just kind of dab from from this bottle. And it'll put some, I'm just tapping on this. It's kind of messy too. I mean, it's shooting off the side. So there's nothing that's cleaning about this, but I can, you know, get some bigger, bigger drops doing it this way. <laughs> I told you I was gonna get messy. Now, another thing, these are not dry, but I thought of something. If you do, the, if you use a hair dryer while it's real wet, you can actually move the pigments with the hair dryer. Um, but the hair dryer is a, a bigger, I mean, this one, it doesn't have one of those nozzles that, that um, concentrates it, but you can have one of those on and it'll move it a little bit better. But you can also use, this is for dust for cameras. So it comes with like camera cleaning kits, but you can use this to get a lot of like tendrils to do like quick bursts and and get some fun you know tendril effects so that's another fun way to 
to move the, the inks, whether it's this spray ink or not, around on your project. It's not going to be as, um, it's probably not going to be as archival, the spray inks and things like that. Although if it's got mica in it, I don't see why the mi mica would fade, but sometimes the inks can. But this is um, the green that's in this tree, this mixed media. It's a it's acrylic, and I, I might even be, I don't remember if this was some latex metallics or acrylic metallics, but, and then I sprayed the tree and that, that green mica like caught in the branches and made a really cool effect. So you can use it to color in your mixed media. I also use it in my, my vision board on this butterfly and to create some metallics on those flowers. So, and actually just to create some metallics throughout my piece, but just kind of randomly. If you're okay with the messiness, they can be a lot of fun and you can get some really cool effects from them. Let's see how this one's looking. As they dry, I don't know if you can see, that mica will kind of move where the where the liquid is and it'll dry where the concentrated liquid is it kind of almost like it floats on the liquid and then and then as it dries it pushes it off to the side a little bit so you get these concentrated little pools of the mica but um and then if you can see the shimmer in that blue, see how that blue is real shimmery. So lots of fun you can have if you don't mind a little mess. <laughs> Definitely protect your areas. All right, we're already at 814 and I really wanna to get to alcohol inks. Hi everyone, just wanted to remind you to please like, subscribe, share, comment if you find this content helpful. Thank you, let's get back to the program. If you guys have experimented or explored alcohol inks at all, you're probably familiar with the fact that they come in. Oftentimes you'll see them in these. This one is back in the day they, when Tim Holtz's brand was Adirondack, but now it's just, they're just called alcohol inks, I think. So same, same kind of things. I don't know that they changed the formula. I think they just changed the packaging, but um, so there's a lot of probably different things that are out there nowadays compared to what has been, been in the past and what I have. I also have these Fiesta color ones and I don't know the status of those, but I just have a couple of those. But they come in a wide range of colors and they come in what the Tim Holtz line or Ranger line calls the mixatives, which are the ones with the mica. And if you listen, you're gonna hear there's a little ball and that's mixing up that, that mic, those mica particles because that's, those settle out in this. So, and that's only true with the mixatives. It's not true with the, the other ones. The other ones are just a solution. So it always stays, you don't have to shake them to get to get the uh, pigments where they need to be. I, these are older, so I wasn't able to get the, the gold one to mix, but I was able to get the silver one. So we'll try, we'll try that. And I also tried, I wondered about using the Stazon because Stazon is the solvent-based ink and they have these little ink bottles that you have to reload your ink pads when you use them. So I thought it'd be fun to try those. I think they're they're a lot thicker. I tried a little bit, but I don't know how well it works. So anyway, but how those work, let me just show you that really quick. Because the stays on, like I said, it's an alcohol base, so it sticks on all the non-porous things just like the other alcohol. And it you know, there's a, I'm sure there's a resin binder mixed in with it. It comes in a little different packaging than other stamps. It comes with this for, for, to keep it from evaporating and you have to kind of reload it every time you use it. Now, I haven't used this in a while, but 
what's really cool about this compared to the other ink is like I said, it sticks on things that other inks might not. So for example, if you have, um, well, let's use this. If you have some acetate, you wanna make a window card or something like that, the water-based inks are not gonna stick to it. I'm not gonna adhere to it and stay, but this one will. Now let's see if I can, like I said, this is old and I haven't used it, so it might be, I don't know if it's gonna be completely dried out or if it'll work, but you, oh, yeah. Okay, so you put a little bit down and then it's got this little squeegee thing and you get your ink moved onto that. It's a little bit fussy. But then I can take my stamp, load it, and I can stamp right on that non-porous surface and it's gonna stick to it and it's gonna stay. Once it's dry, it's, it's gonna dry pretty quickly because it's alcohol-based. I would give it five minutes. I wouldn't start messing with it. Um, but you know, it'll it'll fix and then it'll stay on there. So it really um, is, you know, it's permanent. Now, when we say permanent, we mean, unless you do something like use a solvent on it. <laughs> They'll say waterproof and things are waterproof, but if you use alcohol on it, they, they may lift because they're not alcohol proof, they're waterproof. So if I were to use some uh, some alcohol based something or other and I got it on here it's still gonna lift it even though it's on there unless I put some kind of varnish over the top of a, you know like a resin something to cover and protect it that's you know gonna keep anything from lifting it so just be aware that you know anything could potentially be lifted if you have the right solvent so to clean this off it does have a specialty cleaner now I think alcohol I think it's mostly alcohol in here. I don't know if there's something else. Um, but it's stinky. It's stinkier than just alcohol. Let's say you want a stamp and you of alcohol, but you don't have, you know, you only have a couple of the stays on. You can kind of create your own alcohol stamp. You know, I wonder if this will work. I'm gonna try something. I know that this is something you can do with the water-based inks. I didn't show this, but I didn't try it without them. I'm gonna try it. If you have some felt, you could just make your own, basically, your own little stamp pad. Because basically it's just, you wanna make it so that it's spread out so it'll go on your stamp. But I'm gonna try a baby wipe. This does work with re-inkers, the water-based re-inkers. Let's say you wanna create a rainbow effect or something like that, or you only have reinkers and you want a stamp, you could basically put the the ink on a baby wipe and the baby wipe acts like a little stamp pad. Or you could use, I think you could use belt too, but I think the water and alcohol in this helps things lift. So I'm going to, because this is getting kind of dry, I'm just gonna spritz it with a little alcohol. And I have not tried this technique with alcohol stamps, but I think it'll be interesting to see what happens. So let's do it. So let's say I wanna stamp this color. It's not easy to create a, you know, to just put it on your glass and get a, a stamping um, surface. Okay, so I'm just gonna drip some of that on there. See, um, like I said, I don't know if this will work because I haven't done it, but it seems like it should work. All right, so I'm just going to try to load this with some alcohol and I'm gonna stamp it right on. Yeah, so that worked. It's very faint. I don't know if you can see it. Um, get some white underneath it. There. So I was able to stamp with that color, even though I did not have. There we go. Even though I did not have a stamp pad. That is one way that you can basically create your own little alcohol stamp.
or if you want just something maybe on your window card and you don't have every color of stays on. <laughs> That's a, or maybe there's just not that color of stays on for you. Now, the other thing that we don't always think about is alcohol markers. Alcohol markers are also alcohol, so they can be incorporated in with some of these techniques as well. And these are the Vic markets, which are very similar to the Sharpies, but Sharpies are an alcohol-based marker. So for some of these techniques, maybe I just want a little bit of color and I don't have the color in my ink, my um, alcohol inks, I could always tap into my markers. And now what I do is I use these really cheap dollar store. These are ones from Daiso and they were only like $1.50 for two. So that's 75 cents a piece compared to, I don't know, $7 for my Copic. So I don't use my Copics typically for this. I mean, I would, I would probably use these first if I had the colors and then I'd go to my Copics. But the cool thing about Copics is they have re-inkers to refill them and you can use those just like you use these. So instead of getting these, I mean, there's a lot more colors in Copics. Now they're probably more expensive than a lot of these other options, but if you already have them anyway, you can use them with the same techniques as you can use these little um, dropper bottles. These dropper bottles of alcohol are not re-inkers. Those are not designed to be re-inkers. So let's have some fun now. The cool thing, like I said, about the alcohol is that it can go on non-porous surfaces. It can also go on porous surfaces. Just like if we use Copic markers, I use those on, I actually use those with my, that 80 pound Nina Solar White cardstock. I use that for coloring. It does go through, it bleeds through. But, um, but it can go on there. It's just that they, they're going to dry very quickly and they soak into the porous surface very quickly. So you can't do a lot of special effects with the Copics that you could do with, with doing it on a non-porous surface. You can have a lot more fun. Now you could just practice techniques on glass and then clean it off. You can clean it off with just straight alcohol. Um, actually, this is not straight alcohol. This is 90, this is 91% isopropyl. You want at least, I think, uh, 90, 91% for these different techniques. They do sell a blending solution. I don't have it, but the difference between using alcohol, because alcohol is a solvent, but it's not a binder. It does not include the binding agent, which is the resin. So this is going to, the more you add this, the, the more that this will reduce the binding properties of the ink. That's what kind of will add a little bit of shininess when you see them dried, is that resin aspect of it. So I'm gonna use this to move it around, but like I said, um, the blending solution does behave a little bit differently and it also has the binder and it's also more expensive. And as long as you keep enough of the ink involved that it's gonna, that the binder and the ink is going to keep it stuck to the surface, or maybe you do some kind of um, something over the top. I don't know what's best over the top of alcohols to be honest, so. Now, what can it go on? Like I said, just about any surface. I've played around with a couple different things. This is a glossy paper that is actually photo paper. So this is like HP Premium Plus glossy photo paper. And the cool thing about that is because a lot of people don't print photos anymore, or at least at the time that I bought it, maybe they're they've all they're all gone now. But I, I mean, I bought a, like a whole pack, pack for 99 cents at the thrift store. And of course the specialty art papers are, are more. The one challenge with this is because it's, it's really designed to dry quickly and absorb the pigment into it and not let it sit on top like a plastic would. It doesn't necessarily lighten up back to the original white. It seems to dry a lot quicker on there and it's harder to bring, you know, to get back to the, the, the basic surface of it. So if I tried to rinse this all off, it probably wouldn't lose all the pigments. It's probably gonna hold on to that pigment, but you can get some really fun, you know, effects with it. 
as long as you don't need to get it back to the white. Um, this is another one using that glossy paper and some stencils. This I did not use any kind of stencils. And you can use foil. It'll stick to foil so you can have some fun, you know, if you want to color foil. I'm going to be showing you how to create some embossing effects on just some aluminum tape. That's what all this whole cover is made from aluminum aluminum tape. So if I, I can do embossing on it, but I can also color it as well. So I just have some aluminum that we're gonna play with. I'm gonna try it on vellum. I haven't used it on vellum, but um, I'll try that. You can also just use it on acrylic, so plastics. And one of my favorite things to use it on, I think what would be good for card making is this, which um, was interesting. This is a freezer paper, okay? Now it's not wax paper, so I just wanna be clear, but if you look at freezer paper, it says plastic coated. It's not wax coated because alcohol is a solvent to wax. So if you use wax paper, it's gonna just, it's gonna go right through the wax paper probably. Um, but the plastic coated means that it is plastic, means that it will, it is not porous. And the other side of that is paper. So it's paper on one side and plastic on the other side, which to me is an ideal surface for creating some background pages for card making because I can do my designs on the top and then I can glue it easily because this is paper. I can glue it down to a project. So here's some more fun that I had with this freezer paper. Isn't that cool? Okay, so those are some of the surfaces that I'm gonna be playing with. And now let's get to, get to playing. And I just cut a bunch of this freezer paper down <laughs> into the size of projects that I like. You can also, just like with uh, water-based inks, you can put them in a palette. They'll, they'll dry up just like watercolor. And you can also do this with the uh, water-based inks too. And then all you have to do to reactivate them is add either the alcohol or the blending solution and that's gonna liquefy them. So if I wanted to do any kind of painting with them. So I just have that set up and ready to go with my colors in case I need them. Some other tools that I'm going to be using are this the styluses. Remember the dot painting that we did? So those are a handy tool to use. I also have just some cheap synthetic brushes, really stiff. I don't know if I'll use these for anything, but I just have them handy in case I want to control something on the page. These floor protectors that you put on the bottom of furniture, they're felt and they work good as a blending tool. Now they sell blending tools and the blending tools are essentially a, it's got like a little handle and um, the ones I've seen have been round. And then they have some Velcro, like the hook side of Velcro on the bottom and that sticks to felt. And this is actually just a, like, a, like a chamois, like a fake chamois. <laughs> So I didn't have any of the craft felt, but you could just get regular craft felt when it's on sale or whatever. And um, so I made my own little tool out of that. The cool thing about this design as opposed to this is this isn't reusable. Like I can't clean this. So I can have one for each color combination like I do with my daubers. But this, I could just have one of these for each of my colors and then I could just change them and use the one tool. So it's a little space saver, but I can I can keep the felts, I think, because I can just react, keep reactivating. And then I also made one using, I just had some a round piece of the Velcro. And so I had a, um, just an old thread spool. And so I put that on the end of that and then I, put my piece of that felt on there. So my shanty. And having little containers to mix your inks with is helpful because 
A lot of times coming straight out of the bottle, they're very, very concentrated. Oh, this is the gold that I wasn't able to mix. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. So they come out very concentrated. Now you may find that there'll be some pastel ones and then some really bright ones and different, you know, different values. But honestly, it's better to get the fully saturated ones and then dilute them down to those pastel colors, I think. If you're just gonna get one, just get the saturated and then you can always dilute it down and get your own bottle or your own spray bottle or whatever. And then um, and then you're saving a little bit of money. So you can have basically a light value and a dark value and light, medium and dark value of one color just by buying one bottle. All right, any other? Oh, and then you can use a straw. However, this is alcohol. Do work in a ventilated area. I would recommend not, you know, sticking your face right up from your project. So you could get a longer piece of like medical tubing or something if you want to do the straw effect because you're going to blow some of the pigment around. Or better yet, you could use this tool again to blow. Now this one is more bursts. You can use, if you ha do airbrushing or whatever, you can use an airbrush or you can use a, on full setting, you do not want to use the hot setting because you're going to make it dry faster. And if you're trying to move the pigment around, you don't want to do that. So the cool setting, push the cool button on a hair dryer, and you can use those to just, you know, move your pigments around. All right. So I think that's most of, might I also try it on some of this plastic um, duct tape too. I think that would be fun. All right. I just want to see if there was anything else I wanted to show you. Okay, well, let's get started. Uh, for taping this down, because this is curling up, of course, I want to I want to tape it with the plastic side up, the non-porous side up. And I'm just using just this cheap, like it's not even scotch tape, it's just, you know, office tape, but it's plastic. You don't wanna use, like I use the paper tape with the water-based inks, but I can't use the paper tape with this because it'll just go right through it. You could also use washi tape. So anything that's, um, I think, I think washi tape would work because I think it's plastic. Um, you just wanna make sure whatever it is, it's, it's non-porous. But this gives it a nice border. So if you're trying to do background for a card, this makes or or make a little bit of like a little artwork, this works well for that. All right, so I'm just gonna pick some colors that go well together because you know they're gonna mix and mingle. And I have these two. Well, let me pick something. I'm gonna pick something a little different. I'm gonna use I'll use my square. And let's just do some butterscotch and stream this is stream green and I don't or no yeah stream green and butterscotch let's try those together again if you you could if you pick the complementary colors on the color wheel they'll kind of gray each other out so just think about your color schemes if you pick analogous colors next to each other on the color wheel those are going to work a little bit better as far as not getting muddy but you may want a little mud too, so just, you know, think about what you're using. Oh, I didn't mention this. I also have a little dropper bottle of alcohol and I have a spray bottle of alcohol. Again, just I repurposed a bottle. Um, so I have those both available and ready to go. And sometimes one is better than the other to use. I might want to just spritz this a little bit. And then I also have Oh, and I also have a little bit of a, like a, a fine tip thing of alcohol. I'm just going to put a little bit of alcohol on my project. And then I'm just going to, I put some on this, the little felt pad. Thank you. The, and I'm just going to pounce. And it dries very quickly. Bring it closer. So I can just keep going over what I had before. And it's gonna create these little cells because every time you put down more, it's gonna push the pigment around the 
the alcohol wants to spread and so it moves whatever's there it's gonna reactivate and kind of move the pigment so it creates these little these little cells which are really fun and i can just keep after it dries i can just keep layering it over and over to create this real organic look all right but what if i want to create some other in what if i want to create some little of these other bigger cells just like these what if i want to create some of those well i can create them more white Ooh, i can i'm feeling the high from the alcohol I have my door open, so I do have air, but <laughs> I definitely can, well, definitely want to have some fresh air. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of alcohol in there. Now, I could also add one of these pigments if I wanted to thin it out, but I'm just going to use it straight. And I'm going to try this, the biggest dotting tool that I brought out. And I'm going to see what happens when I set that down notice how it's just reactivating and moving that pigment that makes a really big circle now just like when I'm dot making I don't want I don't want to make too many that big so if I set that one down and then I keep tapping remember just like in dot making it as long as there's a little bit of pigment on there it's gonna keep making drops now I'm using the smaller head I'm gonna drop and I don't want to drop it right into the other one I want to let that dry first because I want to get more layers otherwise it's going to kind of blend into it so I'm just gonna set it down several times move quickly because it does dry quickly now what I can also do is I'm going to take another color and I want to see what happens if I add some of that. I'm going to dilute it a little bit because I don't want, it doesn't need to be that concentrated, but I'm going to need it to be nice and juicy. And the more alcohol that's in there, the more it's gonna move. Let's say I wanna really um, make sure, cause see how I'm getting some of these cells are not purely round. Could be that I got too close to them, but even that one's not perfectly round. So I could go in with my stylus and I could actually, you know, make a little circle. Maybe I don't like that that turned into a Mickey Mouse head. <laughs> so I could go back in. I mean, I can always reactivate it, right? With alcohol. So if they don't like something, it's not a lost cause. So fun cells. Now let's say I really want more softness over here, or just see what happens if I lay down a little bit of alcohol and I move it around. One thing that I've seen people do is, is they get like a, you know, like a little Lazy Susan or cake decorating, you know, rotating tray. So you could, you could kind of blow, you know, rotate it and blow dry as you go. Um, you know, have fun with it that way. All right, let's see. I want to put some... So you can see that there's hours of uh, fun to be had <laughs> with playing around with alcohols uh, or alcohol inks. Um, I'm going to try just putting little dots in with a brush to and have to be the ball thing. Now, one 
thing I want to really try. I don't know if this is going to work. At this stage. Like maybe I should have done it sooner. Maybe I'll just start another. Another one. I want to get some. Maybe I can just try this with that. I wonder what this mica pigment would do. It's real thick. And I don't know how much it's gonna move, like with the alcohol. No, not really. All right, so, so that's just freezer paper that's now really cool designer freezer paper. So, oh, some purple, some gold. What do I want to go with that purple? really didn't show up at all and I, again I don't know if it's even mixing properly like it feels like it just completely disappeared in there so what happens? let's see what happens if I yeah it's not really moving too much it's like it's just putting the mica down and it's not really like moving it. I think that's just from age though it's probably just my my problem not not the um you know because i haven't used it in so long and it's not mixing up properly maybe some of the elements dried up so yeah definitely that gold is not looking like gold <laughs> it's it's looking like mud i think i messed it up with that attempt at the uh that metallic. I don't think that really worked out too well. Let's try this bell and see what happens there. And I'm gonna try this was one that I did earlier with some like fall colors. So I'm gonna just try relighting that. And I am using complementary colors. This is cranberry and green, so green and red. And I don't mind that they're mixing together and creating some browns. Like, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I think I have... Is that a color or is it just those two? Oh no, I had yellow too. I'm going to let both of these sit for a little bit. Play around with this. All right, what colors do I want? I don't have a lot of colors, so I'm limiting my choices. <laughs> um, let's try these two. Is 
the thinner the stencils work better for this technique because you want it to go through um, but you can also flip it around and get the reverse just like we did with the other one problem is it just like i said it it does dry quickly so you can reactivate it And then you let it dry and then you just add more and just keep layering, 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 just like we did with the with the water base. I'm trying to get I'm trying to back up a little bit. Oh, the fumes. You guys. Now you can also, what might be a little bit easier with a thicker stencil is to use that the brush. Yeah, that's much better than the roller. Almost black. So you can see how messy you can get if you want. There's no end to how much of a mess you can make <laughs> or how much fun you can have because once you get high from all the alcohol <laughs> it just gets more and more interesting okay let's put a few dots in If I wanted to, I could alcohol this completely off and just rinse the whole thing, start over. You can use the masking fluid. So if you put down a pattern and then you put masking fluid over it and you, you know, keep certain elements of it or go through a stencil or something like that, you could actually put that on and then you rinse the whole thing off and you're just left with whatever's underneath the masking fluid. Or, you know, if you want the white, you could mask underneath, but, but you could ask, actually mask in the layers. Oh, the other thing I want to show you is um, I did this with a dryer sheet. I used a dryer sheet. I just used it to kind of sop up something. I'm like, oh, it sticks to that because that's like a, you know, it's rather kind of plasticky. So I could cut that up and use those fibers on a project if I wanted to. And um, like I said, you can use this on metal, you can use it on glass, you can use it on plastic. Um, Yupo, they have a lot of, the uh, art paper is basically like a plastic paper, it's a synthetic paper, so it's non-porous. And you can have a lot of fun with it. And I'll be revisiting a little bit of it when I do some of the, the foil embossing techniques. I think well, this is one of my favorites. And this was just a lot of ink and then I just did, I spent a lot of time just dabbing in those circles. It takes time. 
but I like actually the fact that because some of these when I added the alcohol and it moved all of that pigment off this one actually holds the pigment down a little bit so I, I actually like that better because it keeps some color in there so in hindsight I like that it did now this lifted pretty well but some of them I dropped with color and some without I'm going to let's make sure that all my bottles are closed you don't want to leave any alcohol bottle open <laughs> otherwise it will evaporate oh I did want to show you this was actually with the water-based inks from before and I forgot to show this to you when I was working on this but this was just going through layering I did use the bubble wrap and then I went in around the, the, the shapes with some darker ink just to highlight them a little bit more but just layering, letting it dry, putting some more color on, layering, but just look at all that texture. So, I just wanted to show you that it doesn't have to just be the alcohol inks that does all the fun. They both, they both can create some different effects and they're both fun to play with. So, alcohol, alcohol. This was also through a stencil. And then this was my attempt at some of the metallics. My metallic, they think, are bad. <laughs> my metallics are bad. But the water based one, that worked really well with those pigment metallics. But that was cool. So those are the water, some of the water based ones. question results that almost just looks burned <laughs> but if I was trying to make a grunge effect with some foil I think that could be really fun all right uh, anything else to pull in there so I'm going to pause thank you everyone for joining me for another episode of healing art after hours please don't forget to like subscribe share comment all the interaction that you do just helps get my channel noticed through YouTube and gets more viewers. So um, thanks for your help in advance. And as always, happy creating. Thank you. Bye.